Right, so for the purposes of the camera, <laughs> I'll just introduce you as you've never been seen on here before. So uh, this is Jasmine who's sitting in the, that seat, I imagine for the first time with any serious intent of moving a car. Pretty much, yeah. So tell me what experience you've got already then. Um, I've driven around the farm a little bit. But right. Mm, I've been out once with my uncle, but not much. Right, so where have you been? Um, um, we swapped over at Patterson's Cross and then towards Cranbrook, the back way. Oh, right. Along there. So, <laughs> very sensible of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get out of Patterson's Cross. Yeah. <laughs> and not make you do that. Good. So you you have some experience of yeah. of, of what's going on. Uh, could I just ask what are your hopes t for today? Um, you know, like mirrors and like starting properly and stuff. I don't really know. <laughs> okay, well that, that, that's fair enough. So when you say starting properly, has that been an issue? Yeah, not a, like a huge issue, but no. like, yeah. I'm just trying to work that out. Um, okay, so starting and stopping. What, what do you mean by the mirrors? Well, I don't know which order, like, what order to check them in. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, we can look, certainly look at that, It'd be worth doing. Um, what you're not going to get from me is too much instruction. Okay. The word phrase driving instructor um, is not really appropriate, certainly for the way we're going to do things. As far as I'm concerned, we are an equal partnership. Now, there are things that I know that you don't know, which I'm, if there's gaps in your knowledge, then I'm happy to plug them. Um, but this is not going to be me telling you what to do or telling you what we are going to do. There will be certain things that I guess we'll both agree that are worth doing first of all but as we progress through if there's particular things that you feel you'd like to do then we can look at them you've got the progress chart and the total drive yeah. app so you'll be able to see what you've done and, and what's still to come on that as well so uh, yes from that point of view your input is as valid as mine and feel free to say whatever you like, and no need to go as far as Kate Wells <laughs> <laughs> in the way you express it. Um, but you know, I want to know what you're thinking, so don't hold back on any of that sort of thing. I think the fact that we've been able to see and talk to each other on the Zoom sessions with the theory test sort of helps break the ice anyway. So you know, you've so it appeared to me you felt quite comfortable chatting on the way here. To yeah. begin with yeah okay um so let's you want to sort a few things out first of all about getting the car moving i suppose yeah. before we do anything else it is getting a, with this wonderful weather we have now now the frost has gone it's getting a bit like a greenhouse in here yeah, I was gonna say. so well th th certainly if you want to take your top off you can you jump off. but i was also going to suggest it might be worth having a window or yeah. two open in a minute, but you just want to do that first and put that on the back seat. Yeah, now the sun's come out, it's quite nice. Oh, yeah. So if you just want to put the key in... On the way. Hold it out the right way the first time. <laughs> That's the real question. There you go. Just turn it. it. Does can you open a window? Yeah. So we have enough electrics to do that. I've got an indicator going. Yep. Yeah, I think I put it on when I was coming in here. Oh, actually, you saw him moving. This is a bit more space to start with. If you just want to turn the key back again. We can take the we'll indicator start. off as well, if you like. Good, you've worked out where they are anyway. That's a good start. Right, before we do anything else, um, what do you feel, think you've got to do to get yourself ready to drive? 
make sure the seat's in the right place. Okay, how do you know when that's in the right place? Um, when I can reach them. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not sure. Well, at the moment I don't know what you know and don't know, so there might be one or two questions that I ask that could sound a bit patronising. Okay. Um, yeah. But um, hopefully we'll get through them pretty quickly. I'm guessing, as you've done a bit, a little bit of driving, you know which pedal's which. Yeah. So. Clutch, brake, accelerator. Okay. What does each one do? What's the purpose of them? Um, stops, <laughs> <laughs> moves, and then the clutch is like changing the gears and stuff, and you clutch and brake. Right. And, and and you you felt each one of those, and you know how much. You need to push them down by? Um, relatively, a little bit. Okay. So, how much do you push each pedal down by when you want to use them? Clutch goes all the way down. Okay. And then the accelerator. When you start, it's just like near it a bit, and then when you hit the biting point. Down. Right, we're coming up with some interesting phrases <laughs> already, which is which is encouraging. So th the clutch is the one that goes down furthest. Yeah. Okay. Right. Go on, then put it down. Shall I move the seat? Well, do, uh, that was my point. Do you yeah. need to move the seat? Yeah. So. How does it feel to you? I've got to point my toes, so I should probably. You, know, you, you, you have, if you don't mind me saying so, quite long legs. Yeah. So. Am I too close now, or am I. Well, when you put the clutch right down, how does your leg feel? Um, not completely straight, but like a little bit. But do you down. want it completely straight? No. And stretched out. No. no. Like you want some bend in it. How much bend? Because you don't really want to feel cramped as well. No. What about when you hold the steering wheel? How does that feel? How do you arm you know, Do you feel close or far away? No, I think I feel okay. Okay. Right. Well, you know, when you start driving and the further you go, you might feel mm, it's a bit more cramped or a bit further away than I really want to be. You can always change it. Okay. Is there anything else that you can actually do to the seat that you might want? You can change that. Okay. Do you need to? Um, probably you're a bit taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> you just press that one. And it's not automatic, you have to do it with a contortionist. What's the purpose of that? Um, I don't know, so you don't like hit your head like you stop quickly or...? Well, are you likely to hit your head on there if you stop the car quickly? No, it's, it's so like... I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. Like maybe if like the passenger, if they the driver stops quickly. Okay, possibly. What else might cause you to stop quickly when you don't really want to? Like if something ran, like something ran out in the road, or if the person in front of you stopped quickly, or if you're in an accident. That's the main one. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's to stop the neck injury, or to rather yeah. reduce the neck injuries. Yeah. <laughs> Any, because there there is don't feel afraid to touch anything in the car. There is nothing in here that you can break. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> um, so feel, no, don't feel that there's nothing you can touch. Cause I can, do it cause I'm, can I touch that? Oh, is it weird? <laughs> so, uh, is there anything else you can do with the seat that you, you feel you might want to do um, at some point? I'm not sure. Um, like, put it back? Let you climb it Okay. Yeah. <laughs> how, you, how are you going to do that? Um, is it that button there? Or is it a button or is it a. Try it. It's a little lever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to go to sleep now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've got to be. It is a little bit urgent when it comes back up again sometimes. 
got that sort of very healthy sound of your broken seat already. No, no, it's just a ratchet as it came back up. Is there another lever down there as well? Yeah, a big one. Hmm, what does that do? No, I can't. What, what are you trying to do with it? Well, it goes both ways. Okay. Push it down and down again. Give it a little sort of a pumping action. Can you feel what's happening? I'm going backwards. And? Down? Oh. Why do you think you might want to change the position of the seat? Um, maybe if there's a really short person they can see more, yeah. see over the wheel. Yeah. What do you want to be able to see? Um, the road. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty <laughs> obvious answer. Any, anything else that you might want to be able to look at pretty easily, quite quickly? Like the yeah. dashboard and stuff. Hmm. So if the seat is too high or too low, maybe yeah. like the steering wheel get in the way. Okay. Right, so do you feel the seat's in the right place for you now then? I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you might want to adjust at any time to make sure it was in the right position for you? Like the mirror? Yeah. yeah. So what, are you, what are you looking for? To be able to like, see out the back window. Okay. Right. And then these check these ones as well. Okay, so what do you want to be able to see in them? Any you want idea? to be able to see like just like the back of the car and then the rest. Like, not too much. Of Why do you feel you want to see it? What's the reason for what you think for you want to see a bit of the car? Because else you might not know how close things are to you. If it's just like none of the car and it's just the thing, yeah. something might be closer to you than you think it is. Okay, sounds good to me. So, do those mirrors look as though they're in the right place? I think so, yeah. I can see the Make car. a note of that and move them next time you get in the car next week so that you have to do. So, if you did have to move them, how would you do that? Um, is it that thing? And try it. Do I need to turn this car on? Or? What do you reckon? Do you think they're manually operated or electrically? Electrically. Yeah, this <laughs> car they are. So that's the camera. She'll talk to you in a minute as well. That's the one going out, not this one. Yeah. yeah. Make a note that I'll move. Let's move the mirrors. So you've got to do something with that. Will now start. GPS connected. Anything else that you could possibly one day think you need to adjust? Um. Are you aware that it is possible to move the steering wheel? No, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The steering wheel. There's a little lever just behind on the... It's quite stiff. Just pull that down. And what can you do with the steering wheel now? Let, let, leave the lever down for a moment. Move it up and down. Move it up and down. And... Apart from up and down, so apart from that direction, let's get hold of the steering wheel. <laughs> Don't feel it closer to me. <laughs> so you can, because you, oh, you, you, as I say, you are quite long legged, so your your knees are a bit closer. But it, it's a, it's all a case of what feels right for you. Yeah. It is stiff and it's intentionally stiff, so you can't f fiddle with it easily while you're driving. <laughs> but a lot of people don't even realise that you can move. <laughs> well, like you didn't, I don't think. Uh, and I did have one person years ago who every lesson would change the position of the steering wheel, which was great. See what's on their lap most. <laughs> what I didn't have the heart to tell her was that from one lesson to another, nobody else had ever moved it. <laughs>
<laughs> so it was in the same position that she'd left it the previous time. So like, if someone had really long legs and really short arms, they could like bring yeah. it towards them. Yeah. To be fair, that does make sense. Hmm. <laughs> but most people just get in and just, well that's it really, because they just don't think that they can move it. No. Right. Um, th there's other things that we can talk about as well, but you know, one of the main aims today, to begin with, is let's have a go at moving the car. Okay. Beat that on. Huh? I did. I did. Good. Don't die. Who are you responsible for when it comes to people in the car wearing seatbelts when you're the driver? The passengers as well. And like if you've got children in the back, even if they're not yours, you're responsible for them. Okay. Wearing. So you're responsible for everybody in the car? Yeah. I'm yeah. not. You I'm not sure if you're responsible for over 18s or... Well, like. um, that's an interesting point there. Um, can you think, and I do not want the long list of your friends, <laughs> uh, what category of person might not be able to be responsible for themselves? Um, like someone who's like... got like... Um, like, <laughs> trying to think of. You're trying to be politically correct here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of the word. Well, let let let, let me let me <laughs> save you any any issues there. Do you think there are any people in your family who, not necessarily your immediate family, because I don't know who else. I know you've got an older brother, haven't you? Younger, younger age, just bigger than me. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, how old's he? Fourteen. How responsible is he? Minimal responsibility. <laughs> so do you think you might need to be uh, telling him yeah. to belt up in yeah. more ways than one? <laughs> yeah. So do you think there might be an age at which people are considered not to be responsible for themselves when it comes to wearing a seatbelt? Maybe like under 18 or like under 16. How old's your brother? 14. That's the age. 14. That you, are, that you as a drunk, yes. <laughs> so you are, if, if he gets in the car, with, when's, he full, when's he 15? September. Right, well if you're, the chances are you won't have passed your test by then, the way things are unfortunately. Yeah. But if you have, and he gets in a car with you, you can quite happily tell him, oi, get your belt on, It's I'm responsible for it, not you, as the driver at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So you are not responsible for me wearing it, but would you want to drive off if people haven't checked their belts, or if you haven't passed them if they got their belt on? No. Right. Now, how do you want to play this, moving off? Um. You've had a go at it yourself. What what do you want from me in terms of this? And I promise not to laugh if you decide to have a go at it yourself. Um, I'm happy to have. Um, I think I know what to do. Um, I think I just struggle in my car because it's quite old and it's got a, like a really high biting point apparently. Well, that's what my mum and dad said. Okay. So I don't know if I just struggle. So y you understand what the biting point is, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. Well, let, let's see if you can find it in this car as well. Ah, now, <laughs> so in your car, you turn the key and magically the engine comes on. Yeah. And that's not working in this car. No. <laughs> so surely the key must turn the engine on. Do you need to do something else as well? Um, as well as turn the engine on? Probably. What did you just do? Oh, look at that. <laughs> I assume I'm going to stop before we get to <laughs> <laughs> Well, well uh, hopefully, Jasmine, there's two options. <laughs> We're going to stop or we stick around it. <laughs> I don't mind which one. Yeah, I w w we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just have a go at feeling the pedals to okay. begin with in this car. So we'll aim to stop before then. 
As long as they don't move off at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> your um, critique on that? I don't think I've had enough accelerator, so maybe, I'm not sure. Did you, did you feel you found the biting point? It started moving, so I was like, maybe I have. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And what happened, so you got to the biting point, took the handbrake off? Yeah. And then we moved? Yeah, but right. <laughs> not very successfully. Okay, so it was a little bit kangaroo hoppy. <laughs> Any thoughts about why that happened? Um, maybe, did I take my foot off the clutch too quickly or not enough accelerator? Well, do you, do you think you did either or both of those? Um, probably, I can't really remember. Um, well, let's, let's see. Next time, do you want to try taking your foot off the clutch a bit slower? Yeah. And see what happens. Before we do that, what about when we stopped? What did you do as we stopped the car? Or as you stopped the car? Clutch and, clutch and brake. Yeah. Is the engine still on? Mm, no. Sure? Just, oh. Yes. No, no, leave, it, leave, leave it on. Cause that, that was the most impressive part of the start and the stop. <laughs> the fact that you stopped it without stalling. The clutch went down straight away. It was, uh, that, that was a, a real bonus as far as I'm concerned. But well done with that. So should we try again? Yeah. Doing what you just suggested. See, the point, do you, have you realised that you've suggested it all? And I haven't, um, yeah. All I'm doing is let's try it. It's only got more Very revs much. anyway. <laughs> That feel better? Yeah, yeah. And then if we stop the car. Okay with that? Yeah. That's right. Prove that wasn't a fluke. And yeah. this time we will steer around them. Okay. And then we'll just pull up the, the far side. How was that? Not, 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 not as successful. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Why wasn't that one so successful to, um, at the start? I think I did the same thing I did the first time again. Okay, wasn't as much to accelerate okay. and took it off too quickly. I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. And the stop was that right? Okay, yeah. And the steering around the other car. Is that all right? I think so. I think I you like moved it and didn't say it. And the right hands at one point. What are the right hands? Because we've got one right and one left. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's my rather <laughs> poor attempt at humour. Um, I'm trying to remember the numbers on the clock now. Two o'clock and ten o'clock. So ten to two. Yeah. So have you got to keep your hands there? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So they're going to stay in that position on the steering wheel all the time? Well, you're not allowed to like cross. Are you? Why not? I don't know. don't have as much control. Well, th th there are likely to be times when you po poss probably wouldn't have quite as much control. But w did you feel in control? It, uh, it's magic. It's, we've got stop start. We've got stop start on it. I don't know, your car probably hasn't got that. But when you put the car in, when you stop, you put the car in 
into neutral and then come off the clutch, the, the engine cuts out okay. so it's not running all the time but after about a minute it magically starts up again it's not me just <laughs> going uh, izzy whizzy let's get busy <laughs> um i forgot what we're talking about now um oh we're just talking about yeah yeah did you feel in control of the steering going around that car yeah so if you're in control of it, it doesn't matter how you steer. Oh, okay. There's, uh, the, the, one of the myths is that you will fail your driving test if you cross your hands. No, you won't. Okay. You'll fail the driving test if you need to steer around something and you lose control of the steering. Okay. So there is no one right way. There are better methods than others in general, but as long as you're in control of it. So we haven't got to worry about, oh, God, the hands are in the wrong place. Okay. Uh, if you're under control, it's fine. Yeah. Right, now a little bit of a challenge for you because I don't really fancy driving that way. And I'm yeah. sure you don't, because you, you know this road, yeah. I, I imagine. So I'm, a, I'm pretty sure you don't fancy the bend and the junction to go over the bridge down by the otter. <laughs> so what we're going to do in a minute is go at the end of the lay-by and turn the car around and we're just going to pull over on the left pointing back towards Fenny Bridges. Okay, so just pull over on How do you feel about, yes, okay. how do you feel about getting the car out of here? Um, go, don't go on like that side of the junction, go more on that side. Turn. I'm not desperately bothered about where, what our position is. I can, un uh, you know, normally we should be driving on this side of the road. I'm not desperately bothered about that when, when we come out of there as long as there's nothing coming towards yeah. you that's trying to get in. <laughs> um, it's, it's more, it's not so much the position, it's how you feel about what's involved in getting down there and safely getting out round and pulling up over there. Yeah. What input do you want from me, if any? Um. I, I think I'd be okay to try and <laughs> But if it's not quite going to plan, would you like some something from me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> Much prefer this way of doing things. <laughs> Good. feel about this? Does it look as though it's safe to go? Do I need the handbrake here or...? Do you feel you do? Would it help you? Probably. Okay. How was all of that? Um, I was a bit shuddery when we started on the junction. Okay. Reason? Um, I think I think I came off the clutch quickly again. Okay. Is there any particular reason why you feel you did that? I think maybe because I was thinking about turning and everything as well as before I was just thinking about what I was doing with my feet. And it's a little bit safer in there probably yeah. and less potentially yeah. hazardous. Do you know what the speed limit is on this road? Don't worry about that. Or the bike limit? Yeah, we should. Well, hopefully, we, no, that's why I've stopped it because yeah. we're pretty visible yeah. in both directions. I didn't know whether the van driver would drive into me. 
about the guy, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but we know where he comes from, isn't it? He's down yeah. by Fenny Bridges, so we always... <laughs> We've seen you. <laughs> um, yeah, so... That, that's... Well, yeah, sorry, I was asking you, wouldn't I? What, do, are you aware of what the speed limit is on this road? Um, no. Um, I'm, it says houses up there, but it's not really like a built... Does it count as like a built up or... Does this look built no, up? No, but I didn't know whether like the bits where they've <laughs> yeah, got I, those houses sort of like. There's only one or two down there. Is there any indication anywhere of a speed limit along this road? Um, not that I can see. No. So if you were um, in charge of speed limits, what limit would you put on this road? Um, I'm not sure I'd put, but maybe because there's no like indications, is it just national speed limit? Yeah. Which is? I don't sound too sure about that. <laughs> I always get confused. Um, <laughs> Did, didn't we do this yeah, on the Zoom did. thing last we week? <laughs> I know it's 70 on that one. Yeah, and on here, this is a single carriageway. 60? Are we going to say that we were a conviction? 60. Yes, well done. 60. <laughs> so that, that's an added complication of coming out from here. That yeah. you know somebody could be doing that sort of speed, yeah. and very often they are, and more. Yeah. Right. There's a garage up there that specialises in Porsches, <laughs> and they do they test the cars on it, and they do tend to burn along here at quite a speed. Okay, but well, well done for getting the car out of there. Um, your comment about do I need the handbrake when you stopped? If you felt that helped you. Put it on. We may get to a point some later on when you become more confident. There'll be some places where maybe you don't feel you need the handbrake. Yeah. But we can talk about that in more detail. The other thing that you mentioned right at the start was about mirrors. Yeah. Um, when we've moved off in the lay-by over there, um, were you checking your mirrors to make sure it was safe to go? Um, I checked them when we are like quickly but I wasn't really sure what order to like look oh. at them so I just like sort of like looked at all of them. Did it matter too much in there? Um no because not the way it was but but ideally yeah, but we not. want to get quite yeah. right. So we're going to move off from here in a moment and go off down the road. We can start doing some gear changes as well. You, you yeah. change gear? Yeah, I think you must have done it. Um, so we can look into all of that side, side of things as well. But before we go, we might as well get the uh, the mirror work idea sorted out. So you're going to move off from here. Um, what do you think you need to check, or where do you need to check to make sure it's safe to go? All like the mirror so you can see what's going behind you when you've blind spotted. Okay, there. right. So which, what do you think would be a sensible order for all of that lot? Um, maybe that one to start off with because you can like see a lot. And then so you're going to use that one to see? No, out the back. Okay. And then you can check your mirror to see if there's anyone like close to you or like if you can see like a cyclist. Okay, so which order are you going to do these mirrors in? Um, that one and then that one because that one's close to where we're parked so it's less right. likely there's going to be like a cyclist or something. Okay. So you're going to go from there to there to there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How in this particular situation here, how relevant is this door mirror? Not very relevant. There's nothing really going to be coming down no. there. Now there may be some places where it's built up. There might be a road or a driveway or something over here where. So it. In terms of the relevance of where to look, how relevant is this one? Not that relevant. No. Where do you want to be looking just as you're about to move? This side of the car or that side of the car? That side. So, where would it make sense to start looking and where to finish? That one first, and then finish over there. Okay. Yeah. And like you mentioned something else as well. Looking over your shoulder. For? Like blind spot if there's like cyclists or anything. And you understand what blind spot is? It's like the bit that you can't see. 
and where is it? That's a good question. We'll do a little demonstration. If you can just put your window down, I'm going to get out of the car, and as long as the road is clear, I'm going to walk along the side of the car. Yeah. I want you to ignore the little wide angle mirror you've yeah. got on there and just watch me in the main mirror and tell me when I disappear. I shall wait a moment because I don't want to go out while there's a car potentially doing 60 miles an hour <laughs> in either direction. So we'll just wait for these two to go past. I'll just turn the engine off while we're doing this because, strictly speaking, I shouldn't be out of the car with you having the engine on. <laughs> I don't think this one is doing six. Oh, there's another one coming. I can get out before that van gets here, I think. Okay, you tell me when I disappear. No. Now? Yeah. Where am I? But wait, no. So here's your blind spot. Yeah. It's not back to the back window. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, it is literally just over your right shoulder. Oh, okay. Yeah? Because you wh where I was before, you could see me in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, ev everything's off. Yeah. So if we go for a drive off down here now, with you doing the mirror checks and the blind spot, so that you yeah. now become responsible for the safety of moving off. Okay. And then we go down here and we do some recording will now start. GPS and we do some gear changes. What what gear changes have you done so far? Um one, two and three. And you've been from Patterson's Cross to Um the Chinese place just before you get like all the roundabouts. Oh right. Along um, that road. Right, yeah. oh wow. <laughs> so you have done that really, really horrible junction just after the crematorium, just before the crematorium. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? It was stressful. Um, you can't can see left very well. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle was there checking left. I'd leave me. very well. You can't see left no. <laughs> at all. And it's another national speed limit road yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, right. That's it. So, yeah. so I can imagine that being stressful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's not the other way, but yeah. Oh yeah, it's easy, easy. Back, easy it's yeah. It's, uh, ever so easy the other way. <laughs> oh right, well you've been down there. Well, yeah. perhaps we'll pop down there a little bit later. Anyway, so yes, yeah, it's um. So uh, you you happy then in terms of the gear changes to work out when you want to do them? Um, I'm sort of no. I was kind of getting like prompted when to change them, but um, so a little, a little bit. So do you? So what do you want from me in terms of gear changes? Then? Um, can you sort of like, if I've not changed it, and you think I should, could you maybe like? Okay. What do I? Sort of get the idea of when. Oh. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out between us okay. uh, as we're driving along as to how we can perhaps find out when's a good time to do it. Okay. So we're going to move. Uh, before you do anything else, what have you put that signal on for? Mm -hmm. Coming out. Who's coming out? Me. Oh, right. So, you, so what's the purpose of the signal? The, the cars around you can see where you're going. Right. Which cars? No one. There's no so one. So why there. have you put the signal on? <laughs> so that guy that's parked over there. Well, that's a, that is, that's, that's a valid point, but I, I don't think the, the no. Ray used okay. to work with us, so I know him quite well. Um, you know, he, I don't think they're going to be moving just yet. But the purpose of the signal is to tell others, like show others what you're doing. So if there's no others, you don't really. So let's. Now, were you ready to go at the point you put the signal on? Um, no, no. 